So we've gone over cost, we've gone over market structures, we've gone over supply and demand, and now we're gonna meld them together and we're going to graph a perfectly competitive market. One of the market structures that we have covered together in class. So the graph for a perfectly competitive market and firm starts with the market graph, which would be the left-hand side of a single quadrant um, graph that is side by side from another single quadrant graph. So we will graph the market first. And the market is super easy because it is the exact same thing that we have done with supply and demand previously. So we have our P, we have our Q, we have our demand curve, and we have our supply curve, okay? We need to know where equilibrium is, and we're gonna put a dollar sign on that today, okay? So we're gonna say that that's $10. We're gonna say that our equilibrium quantity, we'll just say is 1,000 bushels of apples, okay? So in this market for apples, the equilibrium price, the market price is gonna be $10 for 1,000 bushels of apples. So what does that mean for individual companies or individual firms? Well, we're gonna graph that. So the firm for apples is here. Always, always, always make sure that you have a firm label um, title as well. You'd hate to lose points from forgetting the firm uh, title. Um, if you already include the market uh, title, you, you shouldn't forget the, the firm title, okay? It's still P and it's still Q, but the graphs are different, so stick with me, okay? Perfectly competitive markets, we know are price takers. They take the price from the um, market and they don't change it because if they change it, then they go to zero. Their amount goes to zero, okay? Um, the quantity goes to zero because um, if I'm an apple grower and you're an apple grower, if I'm charging too much, people all go to you um, and vice versa. So we agree on a market price that we can share the customers, okay? So this market price, all of the supply and demand curves in the market is $10. So what we'll do is we will do a dashed line to our firm graph. Then, then we'll do a horizontal solid line and this will be our price. Okay. One thing that we know about perfectly competitive markets is that price is also equal to marginal revenue. The other thing that we know is that marginal revenue is also equal to demand because in this firm, right, the demand for these apples is only at one price. Okay. And the other thing that we know is that demand, price, and marginal revenue are also equal to the average revenue, okay? So a helpful reminder of this at $10, this horizontal line, is Mr. Dark. That will allow you, hopefully, to remember that marginal revenue is equal to demand, is equal to average revenue, which is equal to price in a perfectly competitive market. Okay. We also know the shapes of the curves, okay? We know that marginal cost looks like this. It goes down before it comes back up because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Okay, become, we become a little bit more efficient as we hire more people, but then our costs rise as we produce more. And that's what affects our marginal cost, okay? Our profit maximizing quantity is always going to be where MR equals MC, okay? So for this firm, we're gonna say that MR equals MC at 10 units. So this firm at $10 is going to produce 10 bushels of apples. We know that because MC equals MR. And we know that also because of the tables that you guys filled out um, that the profit is maximized where MC equals MR or as close as to, as to that quantity as we can get without going over, okay? Um, so we're gonna produce 10 of these items in this market, or in this, this firm is gonna produce 10 items, 10 apples, bushels of apples. 
The next thing that we need to add is our average total cost, okay? And our average total cost has a parabola-shaped um, curve that crosses MC at ATC's lowest point, okay? So let's say that we do ATC up here, all right? We label it ATC. We notice that it, it crosses MC at MC's lowest point. We don't care about that number, really. <clears throat> We don't care about this quantity right now, really at all. It's only going to help us graph ATC, okay? The only quantity that we care about is 10 because that's the amount of apples that this firm is producing. They're not producing any more or any less because MC equals MR at 10, okay? So in order for us to figure out how much profit or loss this firm is making, we need to figure out what our total cost is. So to find total cost, we need to take average total cost and we need to multiply it by quantity, okay? So at quantity 10, we need to go up to ATC, okay? Because this is the amount of apples that we are producing. We only care about this number and this quantity. So we go up to ATC, we go over to the price, and we'll just say it's $12. So what is total cost at $12? Well, average total cost is equal to total cost divided by quantity. To find total cost, we multiply both sides by quantity and we get ATC times Q equals total cost, all right? And so our total cost is essentially this, the, the product of $12 times 10 or $120. All right, I'm gonna get a different color pen. And I'm going to label on this graph in green marker, our total cost. Okay. The area of this rectangle is our total cost. How do we find our total revenue? Well, total revenue, again, is equal to price times quantity. And so what is our price that we're charging? $10. How much are we making? 10 items. So our total revenue is equal to $100, okay? That is found with the blue shaded region, okay? And that blue shaded region shows us our total revenue. So by looking at this uh, graphical representation of marginal, uh, of our uh, firm graph in perfect competition, is there more green left over or is there more blue left over? Well, there's more green left over. So that means that we have extra cost. So this firm is making a loss at $10, okay? And so how much of a loss are they making? Well, when we calculate profit, profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. So we'll go color coded and we'll say that our total revenue is $100. And we're gonna subtract that from our total cost, which is 120. And so our profit is negative $20. We have a loss. What that looks like on the graph then is the leftover from the area that is not shaded both with revenue and cost, okay? Only this green area here is our loss. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that uh, visually. We'll take out the joint area where both revenue and cost existed. Try not to erase the MC. What's left over is the loss that we have in this mark and for this firm.
in the market for apples.